There was Johnny Carson and Merv Griffin, all both enjoyable. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. then there was another show that would get these people on that you'd never see with Carson or Merv Griffin. And there would be like these actors that had never appeared. And that was our guest, uh, Dick Cabot. That was the Dick Cabot show. I'm told this all the time. You know, I never set out to get people nobody ever got. Um, and yet it happened. I've never been entirely sure why. I do know that I got a lot of big people before having Miss Catherine Hepburn on. Uh, but after that, it became, in a way, the show to do for people like that. I, now, I, now, you had... Um, <clears throat> Catherine Hepburn, Betty Davis, Groucho Marx, uh, John and Yoko, who would never be on a talk show. Yeah, that was their first time to come on after the breakup. Uh, they wanted to come on something. They wanted to meet me. I went over to the St. Regis, and there they were on the bed. Nothing salacious here. Yeah. They were just, they were working. John had a lot of work laid out on the bed. And... Uh, they had just finished shooting a bit with Fred Astaire by a handheld wow. 16 millimeter, if that's technically possible, uh, for a movie John made, which I was then put in as I was there, <laughs> standing among a line of men, and whisp- one whispered to me, and I told this is something to that one, and so on. I never saw this film, but, uh, but I was in it. And then John- I remember the first time John made me laugh, and he was so accessible. Did you ever meet him? No. He was so easy. He felt like, as you did in the same way with Groucho Marx, the minute you met him, you were your friend, and you talked easily, and there was no awkwardness, and uh, not many people have that. And anyway, John had that. And, uh, and then I said, well, wh- wh- why me? And he said, well, um, you've got the only halfway intelligent talk show. And I said, why would you want to be on a halfway intelligent talk <laughs> show? And like you, he laughed. <laughs> and we were sort of hit it off from that point on, yeah. But um, the other day, a radio guy said, you've got a box set of DVDs out. This is certain, in no way resembles a plug. Uh, you've got several out. But the one called Hollywood Grace, he said, who's on that? And I thought, well, you should tell me. I hear the, you know. And I, I had a copy of it there. And I said, let's see, we got Catherine Hepburn, Betty Davis, Fred Astaire, Groucho Marx, Kirk Douglas, Frank Capra, and Mel Brooks, Lucille Ball, Robert Mitchum, Marlon Brando, Alfred Hitchcock, and Orson Welles. And as I looked at it, I thought, we gave away way too much here. (laughs) That's a lot. (laughs) One box. The whole show is there. I remember, like, back then, when TV used to have, like, Old movies and everything, old 24 hours. The Late Show. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Sure. Yes. Million dollar movie. Yeah. Diddy, dee, dee, the dee, musical dee, clock. Dee, dee, dee. Yes. Yeah, that's, right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And I, I, you know, so I fell in love with all the Marx Brothers movies. <sighs> and then I remember I would watch Groucho pop up on your show yeah. where, it, <laughs> where he'd wear like a little, uh, you know, it was cap, a golf cap, a bird on it. Yes, yeah. and a turtleneck. Right. And That's a couple right. of balls. That's yes, right. a couple That's of right. balls with clown faces on them. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and he would get into these long talks with you where it would be like, when we were doing motion pictures, and these were pictures where they, there was motion going on. And uh, they, they, they were talking pictures because these were pictures where people would talk. And, That's uh, uncanny. <laughs> should hear his gummo. You, you have one of the best ears in show business, by the way, as you know.